So in this video, we're going to address old regions questions related to hydrogen bonding. But let's first remember what hydrogen bonding is. Hydrogen bonding occurs when the hydrogen of one molecule, and I'm drawing it this way on purpose so you can see that this hydrogen here is bonded to something else that is outside the box, to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine of another molecule. And here's a nitrogen of another molecule with its uh, bonds, uh, again, off the box or outside the box. And if we recall the hydrogen will take a slightly positive charge when it loses electrons or shares, un shares the electrons unevenly with the other elements. And the nitrogen will take on a slightly negative charge because it is sharing electrons unevenly. So what is going to happen when these two molecules get close together? There will be an intermolecular force of attraction between them depicted by this dashed line as opposed to the, the solid line here. Now let's take a look. When a molecule that has hydrogen comes in close proximity to one that has an oxygen. Again, the hydrogen will take on a slightly positive charge, the oxygen a slight or partial negative charge, and as a result, they, there will be, let me grab the right pen color, a slight bond, a hydrogen bond between the hydrogen of one molecule and the oxygen of another. And lastly, we'll take a look at Grab the pen. The intermolecular force of attraction between the hydrogen that has a slight positive charge and a fluorine of another molecule that has a slight negative. And just as with the other two examples, the hydrogen and fluorine will acquire a hydrogen bond, an intermolecular force of attraction that holds them together. Um, not as strong as a full bond, but holds them to qu together quite nicely. So with that in mind, let's address some questions. Hydrogen bonding is a type of strong covalent bond? No. Weak ionic bond? No. Strong intermolecular force or weak intermolecular force? And of the intermolecular forces that do exist, it is a strong one. It is a strong intermolecular force. Question two, which compound has hydrogen bonding between its molecules? And for that, we will examine uh, CH4. CH4 looks like this. And because it is symmetrical, it is nonpolar. So it will not interact with any other molecules that would be neighboring it. So let's get that off of our screen. And next take a look at KH, potassium, potassium hydroxide. And if we examine potassium hydroxide, we will notice that potassium is a metal. And hydrogen is a non-metal. And with that, we have an ionic bond, and well, that just does not relate and translate well into hydrogen bonding. So, so far, we have choice A and C are out of the question. Uh, calcium and hydrogen, again, we have a situation where calcium, which is a metal, I'll just use an M this time to save time, and hydrogen, which is a non-metal, uh, again, ionic bond, it's not going to happen there. It is going to be choice D because the hydrogen of one molecule, and I'll draw one right here. Let's sequester it. And the nitrogen of a different molecule can interact with each other, forming hydrogen bonds. But that should be drawn to here. So the answer is D. Question 3. 
which statement explains why H2O has a higher boiling point than N2. Let's first read these. It says H2O has a greater mole mass than N2. All right. H2O has less mol has less molar mass than N2. Okay. H2O has stronger intermolecular forces than N2. All right. Or H2O has weaker intermolecular forces than N2. Well, let's take a look at what's going to happen. Here we have H2O uh, next to another H2O. And with that, we are going to have this hydrogen bond right here. And we have to realize that when something is boiling, it is transitioning from a liquid phase to a gas phase. So we have to have a situation where, in fact, one molecule can now escape from the pulling force of another. And so when it says that H2O has a higher boiling point than N2, it requires more energy to, in essence, break that bond. Now, we also need to consider that N2 is already a gas. So they are escaping from one another. They don't like to be near each other. There is no intermolecular force of attraction. So with that all said and done, it must be choice C. All right, number four. At standard pressure, CH4 boils at 112 Kelvin. The K stands for Kelvin, a measure of temperature. And H2O boils at 373 Kelvin, quite a bit higher. What accounts for the higher boiling point of H2O at standard pressure? Let's examine the choices. Uh, covalent bonding, uh, where there is covalent bonding in in CH4. We have only nonmetals there. And H2O is covalent bonding. That does not account for why there's a higher boiling point. It is not A. Uh, B, ionic bonding. Well, there is no ionic bonding. Choice D, metallic bonding. No metallic bonding. So, by process of elimination only, we could get to answer C, but if necessary, scroll back or roll back to uh, question number three. The same explanation would apply for this. It is hydrogen bonding. All right, number five. Hydrogen bonds are strongest between molecules of... Well, we know that hydrogen bonds can happen between the hydrogen of one molecule and the NO or F, the NOF, of the others. So, do we have any of these in or as choices? And if we look, A is one of them. It's hydrogen and fluorine. We are not even given the option to compare against nitrogen and oxygen. None of these will form hydrogen bonds. And last, number six. The graph below shows the boiling points for the compounds whose molecular formula are given. So we have H2O, uh, H2S, H2SE, and H2TE. The question, which factor is responsible for the unusually high boiling point for water? So why wouldn't water's boiling point be down here? Which you would probably predict if you follow this path. Why is it all the way up here? When in fact, the answer is because of the hydrogen bonds that form between separate water molecules.